Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another episode of the Catskull Academy, the series that aims to give you the very best start possible in EVE Echoes. Now today's video is possibly the most requested topic in the entire history of my channel. A load of you guys have been going crazy in the comment section of various of my videos, demanding that I make a video talking about the Jagoon Trainer, the Algos Trainer, and drones in general. So rather than make you all sit through three separate videos and wait your turn for the one you want, I thought I'd roll that all together into one epic video talking about those ships and everything you need to know about getting started with drones. So here it is. Today we're going to be talking about drones, what they do, how they work, how you can equip them, how you can utilize them, how you know which ones you need, that kind of thing there. We're going to look at drone skills and drone skill progression, which ships you should start with, and then where you can go with those ships as the game progresses. We're also going to then spend an explicit moment having a look at the uh, Dragoon Trainer and the Algos Trainer. We're going to have a look at how you can fit those for different roles of combat, and finally we're going to cap this all off with a little look at those in action actually out in space. Quite a big one, hey? <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy. Now before we jump in, if you do enjoy the video, let me know by hitting a like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, and ding that notification bell so that you know when the next video goes live. If you've got a topic you want to see me cover, let me know in the comment section down below, or come find me on social media, including the Catskull Cartel Discord. Finally, everything I do for this channel is done entirely on my phone. I don't even own a laptop. So, if you do want to help go the extra mile to support this channel, you can do so by coming and joining me on Patreon. Details at the bottom of the screen and in the description below. Special thanks to all my Patreons. You will see their name at the end of this video. Awesome. Thanks ever so much, guys. Let's jump in and talk about drones. Now, drones are a very unique type of module in EVE Echoes. They are a mid-slot, but they don't fit inside standard mid-slot fittings. They only fit inside drone tubes. Now, if you look at the right-hand side of the fitting area here, you can see there are four mid-slots on this particular ship. One is a standard mid-slot that can fit things like stasis webifiers, warp disruptors, energy nosferatus, that kind of thing. The other three are drone tubes. That little claw icon marks that as a drone tube. You cannot put standard mid-slots in drone tubes, and you cannot put drones in standard mid-slots. I hope that clarifies some things. If you have a look at the Dragoon Trainer's stats, you can see here on immediate glance on the left-hand side of its stats there, three drone tubes, then two high slots, one mid slot, three lows, that kind of thing. You can see the three drone tubes mark this out as a drone ship. Now, when we tap on one of those drone tubes and actually have a look at it, you will see that there are three different sides. You've got the standard panel on the right-hand side, which is everything that you have in the station, like you would on a standard fitting slot, but then you have launch tubes and drone bays. Now, importantly, take a look at the launch tubes. You will see that those three are marked as S for small. That means this ship can only launch small drones. It can carry medium and large drones, but it cannot launch them, meaning it's almost pointless to give it any. Drone Bay down below is where you store any drones that you want to take with you um, and be able to use. Now, that means if I put three civilian acolytes down here into the Drone Bay, I've got nothing actually equipped to fight in combat, but I can open this in uh, while I'm in space and add those into the drone tubes one by one and launch them against my enemies. Of course, from the station, you can go straight in and out of the drone tubes as well. You don't have to put them into the Drone Bay, then into the tube. The way that this works ultimately is you can see the drone bay capacity at the bottom there is 300 meters cubed. Now, whilst I can only launch three drones and I can only have three in space at any one time, I can have additional drones in the drone bay whilst I'm out in space. This allows me to change things up quite nicely. Because drones all have their own unique damage types, this makes them an incredibly various, uh, variable weapon type. I can go out there with electromagnetic drones, strip away your shields, call my drones back, and immediately change to explosive drones to hammer through your armor. If you're willing to go the extra mile for that extra control, you can get some real, real control over your combat with drones, and that's what makes them absolutely amazing. So let's, so let's now actually look at some individual drones and their statistics to get an understanding of how they operate. Now here on the market you can see that the drones are under mid-slot and then drones. Now like any weapon type they come in different marks, Mark 3, Mark 7, civilian, that kind of thing. They also come in small, medium and large and I've already mentioned obviously the type of drone that you can fit to your ship is dependent on the drone tubes. Large drones will not launch out of small tubes. However, do note, it does work the other way round. A large drone tube can launch large, medium, and small. A medium drone tube can launch medium and small. A small drone tube can only launch smalls. 
However, unlike other weapon types, you'll notice that there are various different types of them. Not just the marks and the smalls, but here, like you can see, there are Amar Acolytes, Kaldari Hornets, Galente Hobgoblins, and Minmatar Warriors. And ultimately, these have different stats. Any drone ship can use any Empire's drones. Just because the Amar, uh, the Amar Dragoon is an Amar ship doesn't mean it can only use Acolytes. You can fit Hobgoblins, you can fit Warriors, you can fit Hornets into a uh, into any drone ship. Ultimately, being an Amar ship, I can still put uh, Minmatar drones into my Amar Dragoon. But anyway, let's have a look at the actual stats and how these differ. So first things first, damage types. The main difference between the four different Empire's drones is their damage type. Here you can see the Amar uh, Acolyte does all of its damage as electromagnetic, which means it's usually very good at cutting through shields. 11.68 electromagnetic damage. If we compare that to a civilian Hornet, which has 11.68 kinetic damage, then the, uh, the Hobgoblin should have 11.68 thermal, and the Warrior will have, you guessed it, 11.68 explosive. That is the damage type, and that's what I mean when, if you're, when I say if you're willing to go the extra mile with controlling your drones, bringing them back, and sending out the correct drones for the job, you can really do some crazy, crazy damage. If you see that a ship is down to its armor, hit it with a drone that does damage that is not absorbed by that armor. If you see that you're going up against something with heavy shields, send out the Amar drones, send out the ones that will cut through shields like butter. Now what about the other stats? Well first of all, there is overall defense. This is the effective hit points of this drone. As I said, drones are kind of like little fighter pilots that your ship sends out to do its bidding. 268 effective hit points. Drones can be destroyed. If they are destroyed, they are gone. That is why you need to have more drones in your drone slot, uh, in your drone hold, sorry, that you can then replace any ones that have been destroyed. Otherwise, every time someone shoots down your drones, they are massively reducing your damage. Then you have meta level, power grid requirement, those are exactly as you'd expect them from other weapon types. Then activation time. Activation time is how quickly this drone shoots. Not how quickly the drone itself activates and moves around, but how fast it shoots. This one shoots once every 4 seconds. Those guns have an optimal range of 2.4 kilometers and an accuracy fall off of 2 kilometers. You should know from the turret video how that now works. That means this drone is going to orbit around the 4 to 6 kilometer mark at maximum. Finally, then tracking speed is how fast the turret's on that turn. Flight velocity is how quickly the drone will actually approach its target. Orbital speed is how quickly it will orbit, and thus how difficult it can be to hit. And finally, then drone control range, 23 kilometers. That is the maximum range at which this drone can operate away from your ship. If, you, if a target is at 25 kilometers, these drones will not be able to target. That note denotes entirely what you can do with drones. If you want to go for a kiting build with drones, you want to have weapons that match that drone control range. Obviously, otherwise you can just ignore the drone control range and go full on brawler, get up close and personal and punch them in the face. And that's fairly similar across the board with the others as well. You can see that some of them here, the Hornets are slightly slower, um, same control range, slightly uh, lower defense as well. If we go down to the Hobgoblin, let's have a look at the Hobgoblin stats. And again, lower overall defense, medium sort of flight velocity, same control range, low orbital speed, um, but does have a uh, slightly lower accuracy, uh, fall off range as well, but it's the thermal damage. The Warriors are personally my favorites, of course they are, they're Minmatar, very, very low defense compared to the others, but boy are they speedy. These things orbit at an astonishing rate, get right up into your opponent's grill very, very quickly and effectively. So those are how you get drones. Um, you'll see that, obviously, at this point in time, drones are very expensive on the market. Do get out into some Inquisitor anomalies, find yourself the blueprints, start making drones. Drone blueprints are amazing. Ultimately, if you find a small drone blueprint, it will make 10 of that drone every time you make it. If you find a medium, it will make, I think, 7 of those drones, and I think it's 5 or 3 for the large drones. I can't honestly remember off the top of my head, but well worth getting those and starting to make them or finding someone in your corporation who can. So now that we've got a basic understanding of what drones are and how they work, let's look at the skills that you would train to benefit them. Now, first things first, a couple of people have asked. Here in the top right, you can see there's this little button here that allows you to change between these different types of skill tree. For crying out loud, I've no idea what this abomination here is. Change it across to this one. Now, if you're training any other weapon, for example, lasers, you'll find that there are skills relevant to small, medium, and large lasers, usually in the form of small laser operation, small laser upgrade, advanced laser, laser operation, advanced la uh, medium laser operation, medium laser upgrade, large laser operation, large laser upgrade, that kind of thing. Drones are similar, but they actually have a third one. 
Of course, there is still small drone operation, small drone upgrade, medium drone operation, medium drone upgrade, large drone operation, and large drone upgrade, but there is also drone simply named drone this is a very important skill for the drone pilot for two simple reasons first of all drone control number you see that the dragoon trainer allows you to use three drones in space at once if you were to not have enough skills in drone you may only be able to launch one or even two of those which is just not good enough you need to have this trained as high as possible so that you have as many drones in space as you can have Secondarily, it also increases drone control range, which gives you that extra little distance. Now, when we were looking at the market, you will have seen that those drones all showed 23 kilometers. That 23 kilometers is simply because I have drone control range up to level three here, plus three kilometers. You can also rig for this, and there are fittings that help with this as well, but 100% focus on the skill. You need drone skill up as quickly as possible. At least get that to level 4 and um, possibly even to level 5 in this case for that 300% drone control number. Well worth having. Of course, beyond that as well, there are still the small and medium drone skills. Obviously, with the Dragoon and the Algos, these both use small drones, so it's the small drone skills we're looking at. First of all, small drone operation. This simply increases the damage of your drones. Ultimately, it's a 4% increase per level, with um, a tracking speed increase as well coming in from level 3 onwards. I would get this to level 4 as quickly as possible, then train upgrade to level 4, then come back and get this to 5 if we then go down to small drone upgrade, this is a very similar one. Again, it's small drone damage and small drone accuracy fall off. Straight up DPS increase from both of those, plus the optimal range. Just means your drones are able to actually start shooting a little bit earlier and they can orbit a little bit better. They're just they're gonna hit with their target, they're gonna hit their targets more, is the point of that. Again, small drone upgrade to four, small drone operation to four, then go back and get each of those to five. Do get drone up to four first. I would ultimately go drone to four, small drone operation to four, small drone upgrade to four, then drone to five, small drone operation to five, small drone upgrade to five, and then start going into the uh, into the advanced if you are an Omega. Now, of course, there are other things that are going to be important as well when it comes to actually using drones. Um, they are not the only weapon skill on your, the only weapon fitted onto your ship. For example, looking at the Dragoon, and what an excellent way to segue into talking about how to fit this thing, you can see that I have put lasers on it. Ultimately, the main reason I've gone for this is down here. Destroyer Command bonus level will give you an increase to Energy Nosferatu optimal range, Energy Neutralizer optimal range, and small laser damage. That means if you have five levels in Destroyer Command, you are going to have plus 25% small laser damage. Of course, you can fit missiles on there. You can fit uh, rail guns or even cannons onto here, depending on what you want to achieve. And when we actually have a look at the Algos trainer in a moment, you'll see that I have done that because I'm ignoring the skills. Now here though, because this does have that small laser damage, I am equipping lasers into the high slot. I'm also going for a kiting build. These drones we know can operate at a range of 23 kilometers. I don't want to be necessarily as up close and personal as possible. These guns, the Mark III small beam lasers you see have an optimal range of 11 kilometers with an accuracy fall off of 2.5. That means I'm going to be sitting around the 12 to 13 kilometer range. My drones are going to be able to hit. My lasers are going to be able to hit as well. This is pretty much a brawling build because that is in the range of most other weapon types, but that's how I like it. I want to be a little bit further away at that 11 kilometer. I don't like using the pulse lasers that much. They're a bit too close for my liking in the case here. They don't, I don't feel personally that they do enough damage to quantify being that close. Now for low slots, I have gone for a Mark III heatsink. This is the weapon upgrade for lasers. I've gone for a propulsion in the form of a Mark III small afterburner. Always fit propulsion, especially if you're going for something like a, a kiting or long range brawler. Allows you to get into position quickly. And I've then gone for a Mark III small armor repairer module. That's because if we look at the defense here on the ship, again, using the basic rule, it's not a hard and fast rule, but the basic rule of going for whichever one has the highest um, hit points there. Ultimately, you can see armor is the bigger one there. Shields, I'm happy to let my shields drop fairly quickly. They will replenish over time. I'm going to be focusing on repairing my armor. Then for the, low, uh, the drones, I've gone for three civilian acolytes because they were all I had on hand at this time in writing. Ultimately, any small drones you can get hold of, plus a variation. I would consider going for uh, th like the uh, the Minmatar, Minmatar Warriors and a Mar... Uh, a Mar 
I can't remember what they're called, Amar <laughs> Acolytes. Sorry, my brain went dead, Amar Acolytes. But of course, you can use any drones that you uh, seem to, any drones that you like, any drone that you think fits the job you want to do. So that's the Dragoon Trainer. Let's now look across at the Algos Trainer. I absolutely adore how the Algos looks, especially with the Exoplanets Hunter skin on it that we all got from Day 2's loot box. This, just that dark blue and orange coloration on it to me just looks really cool, and the general shape of the ship I really like as well. It's one of the few Galente ships that I actually do quite enjoy. Now you'll notice the DPS on this is a lot higher than the Dragoon Trainer at 93.83. That's not because it's an Algos and the Dragoon's terrible, the Dragoon is actually a pretty solid ship. This is because I have got Mark V fittings on this one you'll see here, Mark V warriors rather than the civilians, um, and I'm skilled into the weapon systems a bit more on this particular ship. Now if we look at its statistics here, again the tops, the three drone tubes, two high, one mid, three low and two of each rig is the same as the Dragoon. The roll bonus of 12.5% drone velocity is the same as Dragoon. The small drone operation bonus per level of 5% drone DPS is the same as the Dragoon. It's this destroyer command bonus that changes. 5% warp disruptor optimal range, 5% energy neutralizer optimal range, and small railgun damage is increased by 5% also. That means if you've got 5%, uh, 5 skills in destroyer command, that will take you all the way up to 25% small railgun damage. Now, curiously, I actually don't have any skill levels in destroyer command currently. I'm not aiming to fly destroyers as much as I am frigates, so I haven't bothered to put skill points into that yet. That means I don't get any of those bonuses, meaning there's no real reason for me to fit railguns. So I fitted Mark V for small missile launches. Now the reason for this is because they are long range. These can fire up to 20.46 kilometers, and you've already seen that my drone uh, operation radius is 23 kilometers. Therefore, at 20 kilometers, both of my missiles, my missiles and my drones can be hitting. That gives me a lot more kiting capabilities. I can stay at 20 kilometers rather than having to be at about 13 with the dragoon. I've also skilled into missiles. Missiles are something I've been using for my Talwar, uh, my Kestrel, my Breacher, that kind of thing. So I have skill points in those, which means I get extra damage, extra range, that kind of thing there. I've basically built this for what I'm personally using. Now, the low slots then are essentially the same as you saw for the Dragoon, but I have swapped out the heatsink for, of course, a Mark V ballistic control system, simply because that is the same thing. It's a weapon damage modifier, um, it's a weapon booster, but it's the one for missiles rather than the ones for lasers. Now, a couple of people have also asked how on earth you get started with drones. What if you don't have either of the Algos just yet? Well, that's where the Tristan comes in. The Tristan is actually the earliest drone boat that you can get in Eve Echoes and is available at tech level 3. It's also seeded at every single one of the ITCs for a paltry 125,000, so you can get access to this pretty early on and use that for running the encounters etc until you get yourself either an Algos or a Dragoon, depending on what you ultimately want to skill into. Now if we look at the Tristan stats, you can see again it's two, uh, two drone tubes, two high slots, one mid, two lows. It gets bonuses to drone DPS and drone HP based on your small drone operation skill, and Frigate Command gives it small railgun tracking speed. Now, ultimately, if like me you're going into frigates, then awesome, fit some uh, small railguns on there because you've probably got Frigate Command leveled up a, sh a fair bit as well. That said, if you're not going into frigates and you're just rushing up to something like um, the Dragoon or the Algos, then equip this with whatever it is you want to use. You've just seen my Algos, so here I've got Mark III small missiles because that's what I was using on this at the time. It was the first drone ship that I was using. I was using those missiles because I was training those up for my Breacher um, and the Talwar and stuff like that. Obviously, if you are going into a Dragoon, if the Dragoon is the ship that you're looking for, then just equip the Mark III small beam lasers. If I put those two on here, you'll see that I still get decent DPS with those there. Mark III be uh, small beam laser, Mark III small beam laser, bam. If I then close all that down and look at the DPS, still 37.77 DPS using lasers, um, and I've got the drones and all of that fitted in there. The fitting is basically the same as otherwise it would be for any of the ships. Ignore the fact that it's got a shield booster in there. When I was using this, I didn't have armor repair for, uh, modules at the time, and a shield booster ultimately doesn't make a huge difference on a ship this small. Either one can work. Keep it cheap, um, and don't worry about losing it, that kind of thing. So that's the Tristan. But then where do you go from there? Because of course you can start off with drones with the Tristan um, and then go into something like the Algos or the Dragoon. But what about the larger variants? Well, this all depends ultimately on whether you want to stay with small ships. And if you want to stay with small ships, I would personally go with either the Galente um, Algos line, start with the Algos destroyer, go at uh, the Algos trainer, go to the Algos destroyer, 
then eventually the Sniper and the Assault. The Assault is a fantastic small drone boat. Um, lots of very useful stats there, some very high damage output from this thing. Great for ratting and great for PvP. But also, don't be afraid to have a look into the Gurustus Pirates line. The Worm is an insanely powerful ship. You can see their small drone damage is up 175%. Um, small drone he uh, health points are up 200%. It's basic, unskilled. You then get additional damage, additional drone control range, and missile and torpedo. Can you kind of see why I'm skilling missiles and torpedoes? Yeah, it's because I'm going to be aiming for a Worm. That would be my end game. Go through small... Um, start with the Tristan, go into the Algos line or the uh, or something like the Dragoon, then finish off in the Worm. Now, if you're going into the Medium, then perhaps you might want to finish with something like the Gila or under the Galante Federation as well. There is the Vexor line of ships. Now, you can get a train of Vexor on, I think it's day five. Um, you can have a look at one of those. You get that for free if you're an Omega subscriber. That gives you drone DPS and an inertia modifier for cruiser command. This is a nice, very easy ship to fit out. Just shove some drones in there, and because they're medium drone tubes, you can fit smalls in there as well. This means, you know, drones are actually a pretty easy thing to level up because any skills you have in small drones aren't wasted as soon as you go to medium or up to large. Obviously, after the Vexor trainer, you'd probably want to have a Vexor itself built or indeed the Vexor Navy issue. Now, I've got a couple of videos on this channel already about those from the OBT. Then you've got things like the, uh, where are we looking in the wrong line? Once you hit large, head up to things like the Dominic's Battleship. Again, drone DPS, drone optimal range, drone tracking speed and drone control range. This thing is an absolute beast with those large drones that will rip apart other battleships of a similar size using large drones again looking at the gurus pirates these guys love their drones there is a battleship up here with the rattlesnake as well that large drone damage of 425 percent bonus is quite frankly terrifying especially if you're skilling into that and missiles as well because you get all the missile damage and that down here as well for having those bonuses i would however be remiss for men uh, for mentioning uh, for not mentioning sorry the sisters of eve tree as well these are great little ships for using drones they're more about the exploration and that they can fit covert ops cloaking devices but they are all about their drones and things as well as you can see here additional drone dps hit points and armor resistance is there as a bonus for advanced frigate command same once you get to the Stratios and indeed all the way up to the Nestor. These are ships that can use drones to rather terrifying effect. Anyway, I think I've talked enough about drones and how to use them and all the cool ships that you can fit with them. Instead, let's now actually have a look at some of this in effect. So like with any other ship, as we jump into an anomaly, we prepare to lock on and then move to a safe distance. And like with my Thrasher video, you'll see that I do this all with manual piloting. I don't like to just orbit everything because you're basically then um, opening yourself up to some rather severe damage. Now I'm going to move here off to the side, send my drones out into space, and those will now start flying at that Algos simply because that Algos is within drone range. It's within that distance there. Off those drones go and they'll start doing some minor damage through to that Algos. Start cutting through its shields at least. Not going to be great against the armor, but pretty good against the shields. As you can see, my shields are taking some damage. I don't like that, but I know it's an armor repair ship. I just don't tend to fly armor repair ships all that frequently. So we're going to open fire with my laser cannons as well. And there we go. I'm starting to do some real damage now to that Algos we'll start cutting through and I'm aiming here with the manual movement essentially to be moving across every ship in their fleet. I don't want to be moving towards or away from any of their ships otherwise I'm going to start taking some heavy damage myself and um, it makes me an easier target to hit. Moving across especially with some propulsion on like this means I can actually keep a little bit of distance and keep that makes me a harder target to hit but there go my shields and oh Oh man, I hate that siren, that alert sound when we get to low shields. I hate it. I normally fly shield ships, so it's just not something I'm used to. A little bit of a server lag there, but we're okay. Drones are now going to move to this particular target here. I'm going to activate my laser cannon um, to do a little bit more damage. And we're going to start moving now in this direction so that we are going across from these two ships. As you can see, I'm now moving away from the Atron there in the distance, and that's doing a lot more damage to me than I would like it to be doing. So if I now start going across, we can uh, start doing some real uh, survivability there going on. And you see that the lasers are doing some nice damage. The drones are also whittling away at armor and shields. They are supplementary at this point because I don't really have the skills. And with them only being civilian drones, civilian drones are honestly terrible. Upgrade to Mark III as quickly as possible. Mark V is not as big a jump as it is from civilian to Mark III. 
get that Mark uh, Mark III as quickly as possible. You will see your damage absolutely skyrocket once you get those active. Again, move across the targets here so that I'm taking as little damage from them as possible whilst my drones and my turrets move in. You can see actually my armor is almost taking nothing now. I haven't needed to put that armor repair back on for quite a while. And that's it. That is how to brawl with drones. I'm keeping my distance. I'm keeping it around that 12 kilometer range. My drones, you can see the little green dots there, are whizzing around doing their own thing. And it's really that simple. Now, if I decided that actually I wanted to bring my drones back, if you long press, you've got return and you've got return all. We're going to drop to return all. Those drones will suddenly disengage from the target, come back. I can then open up my uh, fitting window and I can actually go in and change those drones here. Backup storage, which can be replaced in space. I can do that now mid combat um, and then continue the fight there. Again, they're the only drones I have available at the moment. So they're what we're going to go for. Let's open fire get some of the uh, bits and pieces on there and start moving abreast of the targets again so I'm not taking damage because there with the Algos trainer I'm moving away which makes me an easy target to hit. That's the aim here. Keep moving abreast, keep shooting. There goes the Algos trainer's, sh uh, the drone Algos shield already. Those are down. I haven't even sent my drones in because I didn't double tap because I'm an idiot. Do remember to double tap. I'm making these mistakes and talking about them loudly so that you don't have to make them. There we are. Keep getting that one down. Once the Algos is down, I'm not moving towards anyone. I am getting close to moving away from the Algos, though. So I'm going to, again, relocate myself there, realign myself so that I stay going across everyone. I want to be able to look at the bottom of my ship or the side of my ship and see all of my targets there, basically. That's, that's my aim when I'm doing this. Now that as I'm going sideways, it's getting a bit trickier. You'll see that that one now is no longer in the center on the left. The one on the left is no longer in the center. I'm now going to realign off into the distance. You'll see my ship will start to turn. When my ship starts to turn, again, I turn sideways. And as long as I'm going across the target again, I'm now a hard target to hit. And I'm comfortable with that position. Let's put the armor repair on just for a couple of extra uh, ticks to get that up now. There we go, that catalyst is getting ready to go down, but again, it's now moving behind me, so we're going to, orb uh, to realign across. And there we go, looking for at the bottom or the side of my ship, the two targets are now close to the center of the screen. Now that there's only one, I can go straight in on orbit. Never orbit unless it is a single target you're up against. Let's activate the heat sink, just to kill this guy quickly. I'm not going to showcase the whole thing here on the video, I just wanted to talk about how that all works there, give you an idea of how to do this in space with a bit of manual piloting there to showcase how that works. That Atron is not going to last much longer, the drones are ripping it apart, I'm quite happy now to, uh, to just leave them to do their thing there. Anyway, folks, that is everything I wanted to say about drones. I know this video is a little bit longer than some of the others, but since we're looking at two, three ships um, and an entire uh, topic of drones, I thought that this would be worth you know, going into some depth on. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, let me know in the comment section down below. You know the drill. Come find me on social media as well. I love some of you guys have been sending me screenshots of your ships. Keep that going. That's awesome, and it makes me so happy to see all these cool ships out there in space. Anyway, folks, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.